Welcome back. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. And today we're gonna to talk about the SN007GJS, also known as the San Martin 62 Moss Chrono, a great looking mechanical chronograph that I expect to be a bit polarizing. Now, that name itself already tells you a lot about this watch. So let's back up and unpack that for a second. First off, it's a San Martin, which means it is an AliExpress watch. Now, of course, there are ways to buy it directly rather than going through AliExpress, but at its heart, I think it's still an Ollie watch. And there's some potential baggage that comes along with that. Second, the 62 Moss, which means that this is an homage of sorts of the Seiko 62 Moss Diver. And I think that's pretty obvious when you look at the case. Lastly, the chrono part. And this is where things start to take an interesting turn. Because as far as I know, Seiko never made a chronograph from the 62 Moss. Meaning that while this is still an homage, it's not a one for one. Rather, it's a semi-original from San Martin. And rather than power it with a simple quartz or mecha quartz movement, San Martin decided to use a Siegel ST1901 movement making it a true mechanical chronograph with a rather affordable price. And that combined with the semi-original design, I think makes this one of the more interesting watches from San Martin. And after spending a good amount of time with it, I'd say it's my favorite watch with an ST1901 movement. Now, I'm gonna do this review a little different than my previous videos. Rather than do a deep dive into all the details, I'm just gonna focus on the good, the bad, and what I think is just okay with this watch. Although, before we do that, I do need to let you know that this watch was provided by AliExpress and they're not asking for it back, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. And note I said AliExpress, not necessarily San Martin, if that actually makes a difference. All right, that said, let's get into the specs with this one. The 62 Moss Chrono is a moderate sized dive style chronograph. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. It has a width of 40 millimeters and a lug to lug of 49.7. It's also a tad thick for a straight mechanical chronograph at 14.7. Although some of that is due to the vintage looking box cut sapphire crystal with AR. If you just go from the case back to the bezel, it's more like 12.4. It's also very solid with a total weight of 180 grams on its bracelet. And despite its diver looks, it only has a disappointing 100 meters of water resistance. That out of the way, let's talk about what I don't like here. And there are three main things. The first of which is the bracelet, and note that I actually don't have the bracelet on it. Now, the bracelet itself is actually quite good. It has solid links, solid end links, and a nice milled clasp. My issue is more how it wears with that bracelet and its male end links. With my 7.25 inch wrist, anything over a 48mm lug to lug and it starts to feel too long, as it's where I start to have some overhang, and here you're already looking at a lug to lug of almost 50. Combine that with male end links and a first link that doesn't have much articulation, and the watch just feels too long to me. If you have a seven and a half inch wrist or maybe above, I think you're gonna be okay with it. But under, and you're probably gonna be in the same situation as me. However, take that bracelet off and put it on a good leather or good rubber strap, and it's a whole other story. You wind up negating a lot of that issue, and I actually found this one to be quite comfortable to wear on a strap. So one thing I would suggest to San Martin is to offer a version with just a simple Tropic rubber strap. I mean, it actually looks good on the bracelet, but I think a lot of people like me are just gonna take it off and put it in a drawer. Next up is the fact that this watch is kind of a poser, if you will. That while it takes its inspiration from a true diver, it's more of a dive style watch with 100 meters of water resistance. I also think the idea of a diving chronograph to be a bit silly, if not redundant. But if you're gonna do it, both the crown and the pushers need to be screwed down to help secure it in water. Now here the crown is secured, but the pushers aren't. So just try not to engage the chronograph if you're underwater with this one. Now for most people, in most situations, 100 meters of water resistance is good enough, despite what some people might say. And some people don't care about this issue at all. The success of the 5KX is proof of that but I still think the dive style aspect needs to be pointed out here. And lastly, there's the homage factor, and that's a potential bad just depending on who you are. For some, it's a dirty word they wanna avoid at all costs. However, the flip side to that is that for some, an homage is a strength, as it's the style they're familiar with and they're actively seeking it out. For me personally, I think the homage factor winds up being more of a strength than a weakness here. 
As oftentimes when a company tries to do something like this, something semi-original, you wind up with some odd looking components, or may even wind up looking like a Franken watch to some. Whereas this looks completely cohesive. San Martin did a great job of continuing the design language and fully integrating the subdials into a standard 62 MAS. I mean, this looks like something that should be in Seiko's ecosystem, rather than some sort of strange mishmash. And I think that leads to a very familiar feel when you look at this watch, and for some that's going to be a huge bonus. Although for others, that familiarity is going to be just as much of a four letter dirty word, as they don't think San Martin deserves to have something like this. It also looks fantastic. The sunburst gunmetal gray dial just looks great with the steel bezel. And with these macro shots, you can also see how well the watch is made. With the sharp, well-defined framing of the indices, the slight contours of the hands, and the subtle texture on the subdials, it all looks great. Personally, I also love the dual subdial or bicompact design, where you have the running seconds of the 9 and the elapsed time at the 3. It does seem like the more traditional 3 subdial format is the most popular, but personally I prefer the bicompact design better as I just think it offers a cleaner look. And that's also why I'm wearing my Hamilton and Traumatic, which is my favorite chrono. Along the same lines, Loom is good here. There's always a nice healthy green glow to it, even when walking around during the day. In my comparison tests, it lasted just a bit longer than my Seiko Turtle. Meaning as long as you're good with Seiko Loom, this one won't disappoint. And it also makes it the best Loom I've ever seen on a chronograph. Because oftentimes, Chrono Loom sucks. Now, when it comes to the clicky bezel, I do question how useful that is when you already have a chronograph. But despite my concerns, the bezel here is great. It sticks out about a millimeter beyond the case, and that combined with the coin edge always ensures a good grip. The action is also great, 120 click, unidirectional, and really nice and clicky. There is just a little bit of back play, but this is one where once you let it go it snaps right back where it should. It's also a watch with a lot of uh, fidgetability, if that's even a word. If you're someone that just loves to fiddle with your watch while you're wearing it, well, between the bezel and the great tactile response of the mechanical pushers, this one's got you covered. And those of you who've had a mechanical chronograph know exactly what I'm talking about with the pushers. There's just a much nicer response when you're using a mechanical compared to a quartz. And for those who've never experienced it, well, you need to at some point. And lastly, it's a minor thing, but drilled lugs are always appreciated. And especially on a watch that has potential to be a great strap monster. This one just looks good on everything. Now, let's move on to what's just okay here. And the first thing I think is the finish. Although it is fitting with the design, the watch has a great retro look with the box crystal and 62 Moss style case. So it's supposed to have these sharp, well-defined angles. And visually, I think that looks great. But while it looks great, it's also something you can feel, and especially as you get out to the bottom of the lugs. I'm also not a huge fan of the polished sides. Personally, I prefer to brush just to avoid micro scratches, but once again, polished is fitting here. I'd also list the Seagull ST1901 movement as being just okay, even though it actually makes the watch infinitely more interesting than it would if it was a quartz or mecha quartz movement. As interesting as it is, the Chinese built movement doesn't quite have the same proven track record. And for some, that is a concern, and especially as the price of the watch increases. Although these days, there are a lot more of these movements out in the wild, so that is changing. The Seagull movement also ties into the next topic, which is price. At the moment, this watch is sitting right around 330 bucks, which these days is pretty average for a San Martin, as their build quality is a little higher than your standard Ollie watch. And if you're comparing this to mechanical chronographs from name brand companies, well, this is a steal thanks to the value of that Seagull movement. But at the same time, it's also about twice as much as it would cost you to get a 1963 Pilots watch. And that's the watch that really made this movement popular. So if you're just looking for an interesting mechanical chronograph, that 1963 will probably give you your best bang for your buck. But personally, I've never been a fan of that 1963 design, and this San Martin is much more my style. And honestly, my choice between the two. It really is a great looking watch. The branding's also a little inconsistent here, where you have the hexagon logo on the dial, but an S for San Martin on the crown. It's a minor thing, but it is something that's plagued a lot of San Martins, and something I've talked a lot about before. 
And personally, the S here on the crown looks a little too much like Seiko for my taste. And last is another potential issue with the crown. And this is potentially a big issue and one I kind of have mixed feelings on. As at some point, every watch geek learns that you never overwind a mechanical movement. It's one way that's guaranteed to mess up your watch. Most often, you'll hear someone recommend just wind it 20 times a day, and that's all you have to do. Movements these days usually have some sort of mechanism to prevent overwinding, and that's true here with the ST1901 as well. Once it's fully wound, the resistance increases, and it pretty much tells you to stop. On most 1901 watches, there's never an issue with this, but the San Martin has a screwed down crown. So if you overwind it, you're not going to be able to screw that thing back down without damaging it. To this end, San Martin has actually added a warning to their listing, advising that you only wind it 15 times before you re-engage the crown. And if you happen to go over that and it winds up getting really tight, then just wait 30 minutes before you try to screw it down. So pretty simple instructions, and I never really had an issue with it until I actually purposely tried to replicate it. So I'm not exactly overly concerned about this. But evidently someone is, and someone complained about it. Otherwise, San Martin wouldn't have had to say something. On one hand, I think this is potentially a huge design flaw. But on the other, like I said, part of being a good mechanical watch owner is knowing not to overwind your watch. And I question if this is really any different than any other mechanical watch. Like I said, I'm not really sure how big a deal this really is. But I think it is important they should be aware of it just to make an informed decision. So bottom line, I like this one. I just don't like it on the bracelet, but I like it on pretty much anything else. As far as Ollie watches go, this is going to be on the pricier side. But I think the build quality justifies it, and it's simply a gorgeous looking diver. Or rather, dive style, chrono, whatever you want to call it. Either way, it's a stunner and by far the best looking watch I've seen with a Seagull 1901 movement. And this might even be the best San Martin I've seen as well. So if you're looking for a good 1901 watch, an interesting San Martin, or maybe a 62 Moss with a twist, this would be one I'd recommend. With just one caveat, that you wind up researching the 1901 movement a bit before you buy it, just so that you know what you're getting into. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the San Martin 62 Moss Chrono. As always, let me know your thoughts down below, as well as if you have any other mechanical chronographs you think are interesting. And since I did this review a little bit different, also let me know what you think about it. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.